going on guys so just want to give you guys an update what's going on here so i'm in the middle of designing the oil cooler and um as you can see we got the dash 10 line here got plenty of it so uh, enough to work with and um just to give you an idea of what's going on underneath here it's a really tight squeeze and i essentially have very little room to work with here um as you can see we have the sandwich plate on there and um the stud is on as well but i have to make the lines go essentially upward so we got very little room to work with here i'm hoping i can bring the fat ones which is these guys right here through this uh you know cavity right here so there should be two lines i can fit through here one above and one below problem is the uh oil feed line for the turbo is right here the oil uh drain and line and um drain line and feed line coming from the oil pan to the turbo and scavenge pump is all here and the coolant line is here and ugh, it's just it's quite a bit of a shit going right through this area so i might have to kind of redo this a little bit but for the time being it is working if i can just squeeze these two oils oil lines through here i should be okay as long as i can tuck these big ones up high enough so that you know they don't get in the way i might have to get, just get rid of this stupid fucking heat shield here that's not really doing anything just getting in the way anyways so yeah uh let's see how where we end up all right so finally got the lines through as you can see absolute bitch i think this was probably more annoying than the entire turbo kit install i'm not even kidding right now so let me show you guys what is going on over here all right so we got the sandwich plate on as you can see and um though i had to route it this way because as you can see the oil pan is way larger than the stock oil pan so i don't have a lot of room below to run the oil cooler line straight down behind you can see that this um line that's entering my oil pan here is just the uh, catch can drain line in front of the uh oil pan you can see uh that from the block there's a line coming towards me that is the main feed line it splits into two places the black line goes to a distribution block for a oil pressure gauge and a temperature uh, temperature sensor at the top of the engine and then the silver one going to the right curls around and goes to the turbo so there's like nowhere to run the actual oil cooler fittings so i had to run them pretty much vertical uh if you can see that so they essentially go right like uh over the oil feed line and then come right through here and straight down um maybe you can get a better angle for you guys through here so as you can see that's where we're picking off the filter from unbelievable the amount of lines you guys that got down here is absolutely retarded um that's the bottom of the catch can there that's draining towards the oil pan then i have the uh, <laughs> If you can see right over here, we have the actual pump. That's the oil pump. Since the turbo is bottom mounted, I need an oil pump here. So the oil goes all the way to the turbo. And then from the drain line, this pump sucks oil out of the turbo, brings it into this pump, and then cycles it back to the oil drain line, which is right here in the oil pan. If you can see that right there, it drains into the oil pan. So there's like a, a shit ton of oil lines going absolutely everywhere. Somehow, I don't have any leaks right now. <laughs> so we're going to see now. I hope I tighten them. Even tightening those oil cooler fittings was absolutely impossible, but I figured it out. I did it. Um, I'm hoping ground clearance wise, we're okay. I don't really have any lines dipping too far. This is the only ones right over here. So hopefully those will, you know, pick up and stay up like as much as possible. And um, then I'm going to cut these right about here. And we're going to have the oil uh, mount a little cooler uh, rad mounted down in there and uh, that's it sitting right over there so yeah um, we'll see how that goes all right so just ran the lines basically from the uh, sandwich plate up around the bumper to the inter over the intercooler we've dropped the intercooler and the piping temporarily to make this these lines this is where the uh, uh, oil cooler is gonna sit so a nice spot for it we already cut that line there and we're just gonna cut this one here uh, hold that one with the other hand you yeah. Okay. Alright, where am I cutting it? Right where your thumb is or ahead of it? Right where my thumb is. Alright, so right there. Alright, here we go. Nice. Alright, so now that that's done, our lines are running the correct length to connect there, one and two. So now all we need to do is finish those lines off. So for that, we need to get our fittings, which are over here. Oh yeah, we actually already put them on. What am I saying? Right over here. So we're just going to undo these fittings. So the way the, I, I still got to clean out the uh, oil cooler because that was from my supercharged days. So we're going to, you know, clean it out, make sure it's all good. So the way this works is we're essentially going to undo the bottom half of this. And this piece gets attached onto the end of the line. 
and then we're gonna insert that together into that vise. And then we have some AN wrenches over here that we're gonna use, and these are 10 AN size. So we're gonna use that to complete the oil cooler. So stay tuned. Because she has the fucking letter from work. Yeah. So because she works with like fucking you too, I think. If you get the letter, you can skip lines and shit when you go to the grocery store. Really? Yeah. What kind of letter? She, she got some letter from her work. That she's, uh, so, just gotta make sure this is tight. Like, it's, it's pretty much tight. I want to give it oh, one yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. So, that they should ask, be good. They ask her whatever, and she showed them the letter and the card. And they're like, okay, so she bypassed the whole fucking line to go in. And then she bypassed the whole line to go pay for the groceries to come out. So, she didn't get a lot. Smart. Like, yeah. Okay. So, we got our two lines there. Ready to go, hook up, ready to hook up to the uh, oil cooler rad. So now we're just gonna take the oil cooler rad out of here and uh, we're gonna see if we can make some kind of a bracket for this. And then also we're gonna actually clean it out. So just waiting for my buddy Jazz to bring some brake cleaner. And then we're gonna flush out this radiator and get it all cleaned up and then we can mount it up. Put the intercooler back on. I did actually also uh, set up, as you guys recall, I had this uh, oil distribution plate here, right? So now I actually added on a pressure sensor, sorry, a, a temp sensor at the end of it. And I'm running it into a temp gauge, which uh, I'll show you where I have it set up. Mm -hmm. So let me know what you guys think of the spot. I don't know. I don't, you know me, I don't really want to have like pillar pod gauges and shit up here. And uh, you know, I already have those. So what I did was I set something up over here. So it's a, it's basically it there. And then I'm gonna have it kind of double sided taped up there. So just an oil temp gauge kind of hidden away. Uh, if you're wondering what was there before, it was the old cigarette li lighter port. And I have that cigarette lighter port hooked up in the back to this uh, dash cam here. So, and I still have the other cigarette lighter on this side. So, yeah, that's kind of gonna be the setup for the oil temp gauge. And then here we have oil pressure, here we have AFR. And then over here, this Haltech gauge, which is capable of quite a bit. We're gonna hopefully have this hooked up to the, the new Link ECU. Oh, let me show you guys the Link ECU. <laughs> The fuel system will be set up eventually yeah. for a thousand So over That's here, lines, we recently just got this guy in here. Sensor, so let's take a look. So guys, as you know, this is I've been waiting for for quite some time. We finally got it in. I mean, it's not really anything too special to show you, but it's just basically a computer. So that's it there. Essentially has a vacuum line on it with a four bar map sensor built in. And that hook up there is just for the harness for the USB cable. And this actually plugs right into the OEM ECU harness, as you can see there. So this should be able to handle flex fuel, a lot of safety features as well. And hopefully it will give us the right amount of power we need and you know, just like the security and safety that we wanna have. All right, so we basically just set up the oil cooler. It's using some heavy duty zip ties right now, but it is in place really strong. It's not going anywhere. Finish the lines and fittings, everything's hooked up. So uh, we're gonna be able to now put the intercooler back on and piping. And I basically have an oil cooler set up finally on this car. It hasn't needed it thus far, but I know once we get the hotter days going, it's definitely gonna need it. Cause uh, I know with the supercharged setup, I definitely needed it once we were getting on the, like the higher speed and stuff like that. So let's see how it goes. So we actually had to flip it upside down, as you can see, just cause like there was no space. Like when we, this, this bracket for the uh, intercooler mount was hitting the unit. So we haven't actually bent the support points for it. And now I think it's gonna be fine. It's not going anywhere. We got it in sturdy. So let's see. What's going on guys? So today, as you know, this build's pretty much never ending, right? So uh, today we're actually going to be installing this flex fuel sensor. It's a continental flex fuel sensor. It's going to be able to tell my ECU, which I, uh, by the way, if, I didn't, if you guys didn't notice already, I picked up a Link uh, G4 Plus N350 ECU for the G. So we're going to be getting rid of the Haltech and we're going to be going with the Link system. So we're really going to be able to now utilize actual E85 blended with uh, 94 and this flex sensor here. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this flex sensor along the actual return line. So I've actually disconnected the return line there, which usually plugs right into the uh, surge tank right there in the return spot. So this is essentially the fuel that's actually coming back from the fuel rails and dumping back into this surge tank. So we're going to cut that line and we got the big cutters on the floor there. So we're going to cut this line somewhere around this spot here. Sorry, this spot here. 
and uh, the way it's gonna work is this guy here is gonna sit right about I think I have plans to have it sit right about there yeah and I went with the uh, 45 degree angle uh, ends so that way this can just bend down and connect into the top of this guy here and um, then the remainder of this line I'm gonna have to obviously the end that's gonna be cut I'm gonna have another like, I'm gonna have this fitting down here attached here and then attach that down here. So it's going to be a little bit of a bend that's going to be going down, but I think it should be okay. So we're going to see how that turns out. So this is one of the parts I kind of hate the most just because like, you know, everything's already pretty much built and my dumbass didn't build this into the fuel system when I actually built the car. So I have to kind of now hopefully figure out I got the lengths right and everything, you know, and where this is exactly going to go to connect into this bitch. I'll pull it back a bit. And I might have to one hand this. Fried, fried, fried. This thing's hitting the windshield. What's the chance I cut my finger off, guys? Anybody take any bets? Alright. Alright, here we go. Ready? Set. <laughs> Alright. Please tell me I didn't fuck that up. Alright, guys. I think we got it. I think I'm good. So, now, see here. The tricky part here is I have to finish this line. Right? And... It, where it's located right now is absolute nightmare. So we're gonna have to bring the vise in here in the trunk and finish that line. And we gotta oh fuck, this is gonna be a mission. So I'm like deep crawled into the back seat through the trunk of my car here. So what we had to do is essentially just uh, cut a slit around the entire line there and slit straight up. And then now we can peel off this outer layer, just about a centimeter or half an inch roughly and uh we can peel all of it off there and so now you can see that we have the outer layer gone we have the metal mesh layer still there so what we're gonna do first is install the lower part of the fitting on then we're gonna flare out the uh, metal mesh and we're gonna get the little metal ring around just the teflon then we're gonna bring the outer layer back up till its level and then close the fitting with a with a vise and some and wrenches which we have right over here So you can see now we got the lower part on. So now I just gotta flare out the metal mesh so I can drop the metal ring inside. So I got the Teflon ring in. So basically now it's just a little bit of a matter of getting the Teflon on the inside of the ring and making sure that it stays perfectly inside. Then once it's like, you know, in there nicely, we're gonna raise this outer ring up till it's about level with the metal ring. And then it's just a matter of putting a little oil on the end of this fitting here and then we're gonna put it right in there and then using a vise we're gonna tighten it using the end wrenches okay so you can see i got it in there it's pretty much level with the uh inner ring the teflon inside is not peaking it's kind of just right at the edge it's perfectly i tucked it as much as i could with the little tiny flat head i had the metal mesh is tucked in there and so now we can go and get a little bit of oil to put it on the uh top fitting and then we're gonna Try to thread it in. I'm going to see how I'm going to fit a vise in here. Oh, man. Okay, let's see how it goes. So I tried absolutely everything to get the fucking clamp in this area, but it, it's not working. I, the way I did it was retarded, and there's no way a clamp is going to fit and without, like, bending or snapping one of these lines or, you know, electrical harness or something. So I'm going to have to try it. I don't know if this is a bad idea or not, but I'm going to have to literally try it using two wrenches, one for the bottom and one for the top, and do it by hand. I don't know how this is going to go, but let's see what happens. So I got a vice grip on there and seems to be doing okay. So let's see how this ends up. <laughs> Yo, so like you could call this ghetto and I won't be mad, trust me. <laughs> Cause this is fucking ghetto. So we got the vice grip on there and we are just closing up the fitting here. And it is definitely gonna get harder once we get closer to the end. But yeah, you know what they say? If it works, it works, right? So what we want to do is just definitely close the gap as best we can. We got about a couple millimeters left there. Now you guys can imagine, I did this on my entire fuel system, right? And that's about 17 connections I counted. 
between the, the, the factory tank, the surge tank, all the lines running in between, as well as the split up by the rails, the end of each rail, so it's four there, the fuel pressure regulator, and the return back to the surge tank. And now we're adding two, three, four, five more connections. So you can imagine we're over 20, and this just starts hurting your palm after a while. Like you, it literally just starts killing you. So yeah, I usually just put like a towel in there and then that'll keep, let you keep going. And I used a clamp, a vise for like pretty much all the other ones, right? But, and I have had zero leaks at any points in the actual fuel lines. But this is the first time I'm doing this without a vise. So if this one leaks, I won't be surprised. All right, so we got it, and it's hooked up to the flexor sensor, so we're good. Um, I'm not really happy with the position, to be honest with you. I wanted it to be closer. Now, this line is under heavy tension, so I have to keep it kind of where it lies sort of thing. So we're going to see if we can kind of either have the sensor flipped around the other way or what. But, yeah, I'm going to sort that out in a second. All right, so there you see it. I've actually flared the um, outer metal mesh from the Teflon. So now we can drop in the ring. All right, so we got the metal ring in there, as you can see, I've also tucked the uh, Teflon under the inner lip as best as I can. I'll probably try a little bit more before I want to pause the video again. But now that it's tucked in, now we can put a little bit of oil on the end of this guy here. And then we're gonna put it inside there, tuck it in. And then these threads are gonna be able to catch on the inside of the threads inside the outer layer lower outer layer of the fitting. Then we'll throw it all together like I did the other one. But this time we can actually use the goddamn vise. So we're gonna use these metal blocks on the vise and get that done. So one way I have a little technique to do this is I just grab it with a rag from underneath, grab it quite tight, put my put the wrench through my fingers, and then I grab the hose, the other hose, the rest of the hose with my right hand, and then I twist and pull the hose down. And what happens is the hose drops with the actual metal fitting inside, but the outer rare uh, layer rises up and just until like i'm going to pull it through a little bit more um until it kind of levels out and then we will put it in the vise yeah, you can uh, so you can see how easy this is once you have a vise on it and the things in there and you just you know crank that bitch it does get a little hard near the end and then you just worst case you just put like i showed you the rag in between like right now it's gonna get a little harder to do it Okay, so we got the flex fuel sensor hooked up here. It does just have to be drilled down into the trunk so it's it's stable there, but I have tightened the fittings. Uh, go ahead and put ignition again. Mint, okay, off. So I can feel fuel traveling through the return line. I'm gonna try this one more time so I can make sure. Go again. Oh yeah. Okay, I think we're good. This should be all right until I screw it down, which will be, which will be very soon. But yeah, there you go, flex fuel sensor installed. One thing off my list, next thing we're gonna do is put the ECU in. And then once the ECU is in, we just have to hook up the uh, boost control solenoid, and then we should be good to go. All right guys, so check it out. Flex fuel sensor is hooked up in place, and uh, it's coming in from the return line that's coming right off of the fuel rails, and that line's feeding right through the flex fuel sensor, back into the return port of the surge tank, where it fills up and then cycles back and then dumps it back in. So this is pretty much what's coming off the rails will be detected here. I do have the harness, we will be hooking it up eventually and running it right to the uh, Link ECU once the Link ECU is installed. So we are really close to doing the power tune. So uh, no leaks, looks like everything's okay. So we're gonna put some gas in this bitch and see how she runs.